Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you quickly about reference tracks. So a reference track is simply a fully mastered track that you have purchased from somewhere like Beatport. You drag it into an audio track of your production that you're working on and then you can turn this track off and on just to A-B test how you're going with your production. So to add a reference track you simply right click, insert audio track and drag and drop an mp3 file let's say or a WAV file from Beatport and as you can see I've done it up here in this channel which I've uh, renamed reference. Now when you add a reference channel it also pays to just lower the volume somewhat because this is a fully mastered tune so there's no point in comparing a fully mastered tune with a tune that has been worked on. So over here in the volume I tend to have it at negative 6 dB. The other thing you need to know about inserting a reference track is you need to have the reference track bypass the master. Now to do this when you normally add an audio or MIDI track the output type is set to master. What you need to do is just click external out and then make sure you're on channel 1 and 2. What this means now is that this reference track is going to bypass your master chain uh, and as you can see here I've got a few bits and pieces going on in my master chain. You don't want the reference track to be affected in any way by any of those VSTs. So now if I solo that and play it we are running a reference track. Now I'll turn that off and let's just play my tune and what I'll do is I'll turn the reference track off and on just to gauge where I'm at with my, uh, my production. Okay, so as you can tell, as I turn the reference track off and on, it's quite noticeable I do need to do more work on the tune that I'm working on, uh, which is fine. I still have many things to do, such as stereo widening, adjust the loudness, compress, etc. But this is a good way to gauge what further work you have to do. Now, another good thing you can do with your reference tracks is add a spectrum analyzer and, if you want, also the Uling loudness meter. These are both free plugins that I'll leave the links for in the comments below. And a spectrum analyzer, if we just play this, I'll solo that. So what it does is you can see how your lows, your mids and highs are performing in the reference track. And then you can compare that in your master channel for the tune that you're working on. And the loudness meter, so this is just a good way to see where the master tune is in relation to luffs and true peak. So true peak should be sitting at around about 0 dB and luffs is dependent on the streaming service you're mastering for or looking to publish to. You're not going to have the same luffs for SoundCloud as you might have for Spotify. But um, you would you would be better off to investigate what the specific luffs. I think um, from memory, uh, sound sorry not SoundCloud. Actually, SoundCloud doesn't even use luffs. It uses something completely different, which I'm not going to go into here. But um, Spotify, I think it's minus seven luffs. But um, you'd need to uh, confirm that by I guess googling it. So you can see the bass line on this one is hitting at around about 63 hertz, roughly there, and we're looking at 9.4 luffs. Let's just have a quick look at my tune and we'll see where I'm at. Not too far off actually on the bass line or, or the beat. To be honest, I'm um, pretty dead on, on the luffs and the true peak as well. So I'm not in a bad place. I'm not in a bad place, just need to uh, strengthen the sound of my production just slightly. So I hope that's been a help to you guys that may not have known what a reference track is for or how to use it properly. If you like these sort of videos, please subscribe or let me know what you might like to see and uh, we'll talk again soon.